so the first step in programming this entire maze game is we need to set up the maze in such a way that it matches different screen resolutions so i'm going to be creating a procedure called setup maze initially so for that go to procedures drag and drop to procedure do block so i hope you all know what is a procedure a procedure is similar to uh, functions in a regular coding language uh, so I'm going to be creating a function whenever I want. I can call off it again and again. Uh, here I'm going to be using it only once, but still I'm going to be organizing all the set of instructions together inside a name. So, the, but I didn't expect any kind of result from it. It is not an output function. So I'm going to go with do procedure do block. Rename the procedure as setup maze. So first I'm going to be adding the horizontal walls X, Y position. Okay. So first you all know uh, an horizontal wall. We don't need to mention the height because it is too small to be mentioned, but we can go with the width value. So let me show you first. I'm going to add, uh, go to horizontal wall one, drag and drop this block called set horizontal wall x position 2 set a block set horizontal wall x2 uh, go to math under built-in blocks drag and snap this um, sorry go to the math block drag and snap this block with multiplication symbol in it so let me explain after adding all the blocks why we are using this and everything so the first step is I'm going to be uh, go to canvas drag and snap this canvas width on left side of the multiplication block and on the right side I'm gonna go with again a math block a math value block replace it with a value of 0 0.2 okay so let me explain this block at first this horizontal wall I'm gonna set the X position of horizontal wall we all know X position means the uh, from left to right and Y position means from top to bottom so this particular horizontal wall I want this X position to be placed at 20% uh, that is at 20% of this entire canvas width I want the X position of my horizontal wall all right so that is what I have mentioned here 0.2 is nothing but 20% along the entire canvas width at 20% this horizontal walls X position needs to be fixed that is the meaning of this block so now in the same way we're gonna program the Y position of horizontal wall alright so the Y position I guess uh, uh, you guys can uh, actually predict the Y position, right? It is attached to the topmost corner, topmost portion of this canvas. So it is quite simple. Uh, set this horizontal wall one Y position two. Yeah, the value is obviously zero at zero percent. That is what the topmost part I want this Y position of my horizontal wall to be fixed so instead of multiplying like uh, along the entire canvas height multiply it with a value of zero uh, instead of that we can go with simply zero because anything multiplied with the value of zero is gonna be zero right so simply I'm gonna be adding zero to it now we need to fix the width of this horizontal wall uh, so that it matches almost all the mobile sc mobile screen resolution, right? So the width is going to be um, I'm gonna be placing like 60% so uh, This horizontal wall width is to be like it must occupy 60% of the size along the entire canvas So following the same set of procedure go to horizontal wall one drag and snap set horizontal wall width to go for the multiplication symbol and a math block go to canvas drag and drop canvas width multiplied by a value of 
60% means we need to give a value of 0 0.6. Alright. 0.6. In a similar way, I am going to be programming the x, y position of the vertical wall at first. So, vertical wall 1. So, you can see the image here, right? The vertical wall 1. Uh, uh, so we all know the top left corner x y coordinate value inside a canvas right so it is nothing but 0 comma 0 so I'm gonna go with uh, vertical wall 1 set vertical wall 1's x position to 0 similarly vertical wall 1's y position So again 0 and then for vertical walls we don't need to mention the width as it is too small to be mentioned but instead we need to mention the height so uh, for vertical walls I'm gonna go with a size of 40 percent so along the entire canvas height I want my vertical wall to occupy 40 percent of this entire canvas so in order to do that go to vertical wall 1 drag and drop set vertical wall 1 height 2 go to math drag and drop this multiplication block and add along the entire canvas height I want this to occupy 40% so which means 0.4 Alright, great. So now following the same number of steps, uh, I want you to uh, complete this activity for remaining walls. all right so now we are going to go for this black square so for this black square we need to uh, adjust the x position y position along with height and width so for that i'm going to be duplicating the existing x and y blocks and then change it to black square so black square x position to 0.4 percent y position to 0 percent as it is attached to the topmost part of this canvas and height to 0.3 and width to 0.2 it is like a rectangle okay it could be a black rectangle so now let us move on to adjust this x and y position of the hoop and you did it image so for hoop image set hoops x position
so using multiplication blocks is one way now I'm going to show you another way of uh, adding the XY position based on percentage which is we can go for the math block drag and drop the subtraction sign and add so my hoop I want my hoop image to be placed at so along the entire canvas width I'm going to subtract the first 70% and in the remaining 30% only I want my hoop image and you did it image to occupy uh, pretty much on the same place right so I'm gonna be following this procedure call uh, along this entire canvas width subtract the value of 70 all right which means the 70 percent will be subtracted and in the remaining 30 percent this image will be placed so the for the y position again the same step so duplicate it set y position to along the entire canvas height along the entire canvas height subtract the first 70 percent and then occupy the remaining 30 percent for this set hoop y to canvas canvas one dot height minus 70 so follow the same set of steps for the um, you did it image as well set you did it x position and set you did it y position so so far we have completed only the designing part the designing element like how uh, what is the size of each and every component and at what position it must be placed on all these steps we have completed so now we'll go into the real programming part so for this uh, the first step is we need to click uh, we need to program like what must happen as soon as the screen is initialized right because as soon as the screen is initialized I want this setup maze procedure to be carried out so I'm gonna go with when screen one drag and drop this event handler call when screen one is initialized and screen one is initialized the first step I'm gonna be doing is call setup maze so that whatever the set of instructions specified inside this procedure will take place all right and now uh, I want my accelerator accelerometer sensor to be enabled so that according to the movement of the device uh, that particular ball will move inside the canvas component so go for accelerometer sensor drag and drop set accelerometer sensor enabled to go to logic drag and drop this true block I'm going to enable this accelerometer sensor and then initially uh, the setup maze all the obstacles and the walls would be uh, aligned inside the canvas and then we have a ball component now uh, and then we have um, added even added an accelerometer sensor now the next step is we need to display only the maze hoop right I don't want this you did it image to be visible initially before the ball falling into the hoop I want the hoop image to be displayed whereas the you did it image will go hidden so in order to do that um, go to hoop drag and drop this block called set hoop uh, visible to and then set the visibility of you did it to false all right so now we will program uh, the most important part like it could be a formula for accelerometer sensor so according to the tilt of the device uh, the X and Y position like where if the user is tilting towards left or the user is tilting towards right so accordingly uh, that particular information should be processed and uh, to be shared to the ball component right so in order to do that we are going to go with a formula uh, so for this uh, first we need to be adding uh, accelerometer when accelerometer sensor acceleration changed 
I'm going to go over this event called when accelerometer sensor acceleration is changed uh, because every time uh, you tilt the accelerometer's acceleration is going to be changed a different x axel y axel and z axel values would be generated and all those values would be saved inside these three variables every time you change the tilt all right so now we're gonna add a formula like according to the x y and z axle values i want my ball component to be moved so go to ball drag and drop this uh, block called set ball one's x position to go to math drag and snap this subtraction um again balls x position minus hover over x axle drag and snap get x axle and duplicate this set balls y position to ball y this time I need to add addition so simply remove the subtraction block and add a plus symbol all right Over, over x axel and change it to y axel so this is going to act as a formula uh, like uh, uh, there is a derivation separate derivation of how this formula is being derived in MIT app inventor documentation itself so I don't want to go deep into this let's just keep it as a formula so that according to the tilt of the accelerometer sensor the ball component would be aligned in the screen so wherever you use accelerometer sensor in your app you must uh, use this as a formula right now we'll skip on to the collision direction part I want my ball component to not hit these obstacles right so uh, but I want my ball component to fall exactly into the hoop so there are two different probabilities in this case that is the ball touching the obstacle and another one is the ball touching the hoop so we're gonna use this collision detection format in this particular program so for this I'm gonna go with the conditional statements if the ball touches uh, hoop what must happen or else or else automatically means it is touching the obstacle right in this way we're gonna go on with the coding part so for this the first step is uh, go to ball component drag and drop when ball collided with so when ball collided with uh, I'm gonna go with the conditions uh, conditions as mentioned so go to the control statement drag and drop this call uh, drag and drop this conditional statement call if then else all right so first it is going to check a logic of the ball collided with at that moment whatever the component the ball is collided with that would be saved under this variable called other so for example let me say if the ball touches the vertical wall 2 while playing it what it will do is that uh, other variable will hold the value of other is equal to vertical wall 2 okay so that information would be varying continuously according to the collision of the ball so now it is going to check if that particular other variables value is equal to hoop okay if it matches hoop then automatically means uh, the user has won the game right so go to hoop drag and drop this block call hoop available at the bottom part so here we are going to check if this other variable holds the value of hoop which automatically means the ball has collided with the hoop image in that case I'm go uh, the first step is I need to disable my accelerometer sensor component otherwise it will continue the game will continue to go on right so first I'm going to be disabling uh, for that set accelerometer sensor enable to false and then I'm gonna call the notifier component to display a pop-up message to the user so go to notifier drag and snap this block called uh, call notifier with two button text okay I don't want to cancel button so I'm gonna enable it to false and here what is the message that is going to be conveyed go to title go to text drag and snap this empty text string block and uh, inside this simply we can just duplicate this block and add it for the rest of the buttons as well 
okay so the message that is going to be conveyed uh, the title is you won the game right you won the game all right and the message is do you want to play again do you want to continue or whatever that whatever the text that you like to display I'm gonna give like do you want to continue with two button text like S or the button to text as quit okay so two buttons will pop up telling S and quit and then not only this but as soon as the ball falls into the hoop I want my uh, hoop image to go invisible and the you did it image to be displayed as a symbol of achievement alright so for this I'm gonna go with set hoop visibility to false go to logic drag and drop the false block and then you did it visibility to be true great so now we need to uh, okay sorry so by mistake I've added everything in the else simply drag and snap it inside the then statement okay because all these set of instruction to be carried out only when the ball component touches the hoop component right otherwise in the else statement we need to code for what must happen if the ball falls on to any other obstacle so other than hoop there are uh, multiple obstacles in square like rest of all the components are obstacles other than the hoop right so uh, it will fall uh, so literally everything falls under the else category so I'm gonna be uh, what must happen when the ball touches the hoop uh, when the ball touches any of the obstacle is the game must restart so what I will do is I will call the ball component to the starting position again so for that I'm going to go with call ball 1 move to x and y block the x and y position is the starting position so here uh, I want my ball to move to the top left but on the top left corner I have my obstacle so again it would collide with the programming part right so the top position is same the y position could be zero but the x position is slightly uh, away from the vertical wall in order to do that I'm gonna give a math value of uh, let's say 50 or 45 anything and the y position is 0 okay so with this we have completed the collision detection part and then we need to program what must happen uh, after the user gives input to the notifier component like what must what should happen if the user presses the yes button or quit button in order to program this go to notifier when notifier after choosing again we need to go for the conditional statements there are two different probabilities like if s yes or quit so go to control drag and drop another if then else statement and then go to logic drag and drop an equal to statement and place it with uh, if condition if uh, let us say if the choice by the user is equal to the text as quit okay that is what I have given right the quit so type in the same text here it is highly case sensitive so if the user's choice is quit I want to close this application so go to control uh, you can drag and snap this close application block or else I'm going to go to the next level okay so here I'm going to stop till now I'm going to stop this entire programming part I'm gonna leave it up to you you can create your own maze in screen too and continue with the coding alright so for else statement I'm going to open another screen open another screen so for this I'm gonna add another screen called screen 2 okay 
another screen so here remember the first step you need to do is you need to enable the accelerometer sensor as soon as the screen is initialized okay so go to sensors don't forget to add the accelerometer sensor and then as soon as screen 2 is initialized enable the accelerometer sensor to true Okay. and then you can go on with the designing part you can set up your own ways and then continue so here I'm gonna go for screen 1 open another screen called screen 2 okay if the user clicks the another button which is uh, S he wants to continue the game right then it will move on to the level 2 you can design your own level 2 here uh, thanks for watching this video i'm gonna come up with multiple mit app inventor tutorials so please like share and subscribe to the fellow mitians thank you all